My name is Dade Butler. I am the lead customer service agent with Page Optimizer Pro, and today we're going over the Pop AI Writer, the AI Writer dashboard, as well as the GPT-4 API access key. First, let's navigate to account settings via the account dropdown, then selecting billing and payments and buy credits. We aren't here to buy credits, but we are here for this infographic here. With this infographic, we can see that per 1,000 words of generated content, it will cost us four POP credits. This means if we were to generate 2,000 words, for example, it would cost us a total of eight POP credits. This is quite a substantial cost, as the basic plan itself only comes with total 20 POP credits. So how can we save ourselves some credits when using the POP AI Writer? The answer to this question is the GPT-4 API access key. If you have the subscription to ChatGPT+, then you should have access to the GPT-4 API access key. If you insert your GPT-4 API access key into Page Optimizer Pro in the menu you see on your screen now, then every AI writer will only cost you one credit, irregardless of how many terms you generate or any enriched content added. So if you want to generate 4,000 words with a fact section, a list, a table, an introduction paragraph, and a conclusion paragraph, while it would be pricey without the GPT-4 access key, it's going to only cost you one total credit with the GPT-4 access key. This is why we strongly encourage getting the GPT-4 API access key if you plan on generating a ton of content with POP's AI Writer. With that out of the way, let's go over the AI Articles dashboard. Inside of the account drop-down menu, you can find the AI Articles dashboard marked with a magic wand icon. Selecting it will then take you to the dashboard, and at the top, you'll find a search bar. In the search bar, you can search for your AI articles via their AI article ID, their report ID, the keyword for that particular report, or the URL. This makes it significantly easier to locate our AI articles. Otherwise, we'd have to memorize which report each one of these articles were written in. This way, we have multiple ways of searching for a particular AI article, and when we find the AI article that we want, inside of the action column, we can click View. This takes us rapidly to the AI article writer and allows us to get started with what we need to do. Lastly, but certainly not least, let's get started with the AI writer itself. It's important to understand that you won't be able to access Page Optimizer Pro's AI Writer until you have a Page Optimizer Pro report generated. The reason for this is, is that the Page Optimizer Pro AI Writer is prompted to write based on the suggestions from our content brief. It is also programmed to use the competitors as inspiration for the content that it generates. And then finally, weighing heavily on our primary keyword, including it throughout the article. Clicking View Pages, then View Page Runs, we're taken to the report whose AI Writer I will use for today's presentation. Please remember that you can always access the AI Writer via the report card from our report. You can see it here with the AI Writer button. Clicking Open Report, we're then taken to the content brief. Remember what I said earlier. The AI Writer writes according to the content brief's suggestions. This means we have some control over the final output of the AI Writer. Scrolling down, let's look at the sections for our content brief. You can see here that I have a remove term. That remove term is what is search engine optimization. Because I removed this particular term, my important terms range decreased from two to three to one to two. This affects how the AI Writer chooses to write. With this term included, the AI writer is incentivized to write a total of two important terms inside of our title, at the very least. But with the removal of this particular term, now it's incentivized to write only one term inside of our title. This affects its output and is something that you should take into consideration when using the AI writer. If you don't want a term included, simply click on the checkbox next to it and then click remove. That'll essentially remove it from the AI Writer's vocabulary and save you a ton of time. Clicking Recover brings that term back 
and readjusts your important terms range. If you have secondary keywords added to your report, and they're found inside of each of these sections to be important, then that will also be taken into consideration when generating your article using the AI Writer. With that out of the way, let's go to the AI Writer itself. Inside of the report, you can access the AI Writer via the Content Briefs Summary section. You can find the button directly next to the Content Editor button and the Copy Secret Key button. Clicking on the AI Writer, we're then taken to a separate tab. Now, let's get started generating with POP's AI Writer. Clicking Start, we're taken to Step 1. On Step 1, we specify the total number of words that we would like the AI Writer to generate. We can specify anywhere in between 500 and 4,000 words. It's important to understand that the AI Writer is still an AI. So, if we ask it to generate a thousand words, for example, we can expect it to be between 700 and 1300 words. On step one, we can ask it to generate based on our current word count for our target page, the target word count for our content brief, or a custom word count that we ourselves specify. All of these selections are still subject to the minimum and maximum number of words that we can ask the AI writer to generate. So while this says 130 words are going to be generated, it'll actually generate 500. Selecting custom word count, I'd like to showcase something that I think is important. At 1,000 total words without the GPT-4 API access key enabled, it's going to cost us four total credits to generate this AI article. Going up to 1,001, it'll then cost us a total of eight credits. For this reason, I recommend busting out a calculator in order to do cost-benefit analysis for any time you use the AI Writer. If it's worth it to you to pay the extra four credits to generate 1,650 words of content, then do so. However, it's not really worth it to pay four additional credits to generate one extra word. So keep that in mind. Today, I'll be generating 2,500 words using the AI Writer. Clicking Next, has caused this pop-up to trigger. This pop-up is letting us know that our current specified word count is below our target word count. This is strongly advised against, and by clicking cancel, we can go back and adjust our target word count. However, we're satisfied with our target word count, so we'll click next. If you change your mind, you can always click on that prior step to go back to it. On step two, we generate our rich content. This tells the AI to automatically generate bold terms, italic terms, images, lists, forms, a frequently asked questions section, a table of contents, tables, a meta description, an introduction paragraph, or a conclusion paragraph. With the GPT-4 API access key enabled, as I mentioned earlier, none of these will cost you anything. However, if you do not have the GPT-4 API access key enabled, please look at the cost column. Lists, frequently asked questions, tables, meta descriptions, introduction paragraphs, or a conclusion paragraph will all cost you one additional pop credit to generate. Keep this into consideration when calculating the total cost for this particular use of the AI Writer. Today, we're going to ask it to generate a meta description, an introduction paragraph, a conclusion paragraph, and some bold terms. We're going to ask it to generate a total of 40 bold terms and one of everything else. Clicking next from here takes us to step three. On step three, we specify which competitors we would like the AI writer to use for inspiration. Here we have Search Engine Land, SEMrush, and Moz Selected. These are excellent competitors for the AI Writer to use as inspiration. Scrolling down, we come to the Tone, Author, and Brand text fields. With Tone, we can ask the AI Writer to write in a positive, negative, informative, jovial, technical, or whatever tone you would like to specify. Today, I'd like to specify informative. Author tells the AI Writer 
what perspective it's writing from. From the perspective of a lawyer, an SEO, an accountant, a politician, or what whatever perspective you would like to specify. Today, we're specifying SEO. Finally, is brand. This tells the AI writer which brand it is writing for. You can tell it Page Optimizer Pro, for example, and it'll automatically include Page Optimizer Pro throughout the article. Today, that's what I'll be doing. Finally, at the very bottom, we can choose to generate the search engine title and the page title separately. This isn't recommended as it takes a lot of time and it's recommended for your page title and your title tag to match anyway. We're going to leave this option, disable, and move on to step four. Here, we finally begin generating content. We can have the AI writer use our title for inspiration or use our previously selected competitors' as titles for AI inspiration. We can have it use both, one, or none at all. If we choose to have it use nothing as the inspiration, then we have to give the AI an example of a search engine title and page title that we would like it to write. Today, we're going to use our title for AI inspiration as well as our competitors' titles for AI inspiration. Then we'll click Generate. While this is generating, let's go below and go over this particular option. If you're satisfied with your title as it is written, you can use your search engine title and your page title exactly as is. No edits, just extraction. Welcome back. As you can see, our title and our page title have been generated. To the right, an infographic has appeared detailing how many credits will be used for this particular AI article. It lets us know how much was used on our word count generation, as well as how much was used for our rich content. If we regenerate beyond the five initial free regeneration credits, then those will also be specified in the respective fields. If you're dissatisfied with your title or your H1, you can click on them to manually edit them. You can click on here to copy that particular title, and then you can click on here to save your edits. You can regenerate each one of these by clicking Regenerate. You can view the history of the generations by clicking View History, and you can download your title and your H1 as they are generated by clicking Download. Clicking Next from here, we then go on to Step 5. Above, we can tell it if we want it to use our H2s or our competitors' H2s for AI inspiration, or both at the same time. If you would like it to extract your H2s and H3s, you can tell it that you don't want it to generate new H2s and H3s and to use your H2s and H3s as is by selecting this lighter here. I want it to generate content, so I'll click Generate. Welcome back. While you were away, our subheadings have generated. Scrolling down, this is what generated subheadings will look like. H2s will be marked in blue. H3s will be marked in magenta. You can move the order that these H2s and H3s are stacked by clicking and dragging. If you would like to edit an H2 or an H3, you can click on the subheading and then type away. Selecting this allows you to change that subheading from H2s to H3s or vice versa. Selecting this allows you to copy that particular subheading to your clipboard. Clicking this allows you to delete that subheading and clicking this, save the subheading as it is written. Below, we can add a new subheading by clicking on this button here. We can regenerate our subheadings by clicking Regenerate. We can show the history of our generations by clicking Show History. And then finally, we can download the outline right here. Clicking Next, let's progress to Step 6. When progressing to Step 6, it is very important to make sure that you're satisfied with your setup so far. The reason is, is advancing to step six will prevent you from going backwards to steps one, two, three, four, five. So be certain if you want to proceed. Clicking okay, we're now on step six. 
we can supply the AI with main content and ask it to rewrite it by clicking onto this radio dial here. You will need to post the content inside of these text fields individually. These each are subheadings for your particular article. And then once you have added it, you'll then select generate paragraph text. Below, however, you can ask it to generate all the main content completely from scratch. This is what we'll be selecting today. When generating main content, it is important to note that it can take anywhere between 20 to 25 minutes. This depends on the total number of words that you ask the AI writer to generate. I'll see you on the flip side after our content has generated. Welcome back. As you can see, the AI writer has finished writing all of our main content. Once again, it generates this main content based on the suggestions from our content brief. Clicking check optimization score, I can see that the AI writer has written in a 100% optimized article. However, it is important to remember that the AI writer is still an AI. If you're working in a more technical field like health or law, you may want to fact check the entirety of the AI article. Even then, if you're writing for one of those topics such as food or something subjective like a best of list, you will still want to edit the AI writer's output. The AI writer is still an AI, and as such, it's prone to overusing introduction sentences. Editing its output can make it seem more human and make it much easier to read. Scrolling down, we can see that our meta description has been written, our introduction paragraph, our bold terms. If we scroll down a little bit further, we'll find our conclusion paragraph. With that, we can click check optimization score, see our 100% score, and then from here, we can download the article as a TXT, HTML, .html, or a Word document. With that, you know everything you need to know in order to use Pop's AI Writer. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy optimizing!